a poem from the Song Dynasty uttered by a Zen master, Hui Kai. When I say uttered, it's uttered after, um, after meditation from the heart. In other words, it was not written down, it was not pondered upon, it's just uttered right from the bottom of the heart. I, I utter in Chinese first, I speak in Chinese first and then I translate it. Chun yo bai hua qiu yo yue. Spring comes with innumerable flowers and plants. The spring comes with innumerable flowers and plants. Xia yo liang feng dong yo xue. Autumn shines the night with the loveliest moon, and summer has the gentle breeze. Winter gives you the white snow. You think each of the four seasons has its unique features that give you moments of peace. But I say your best season is when you have no obstacles in your mind. That's the best season. So, my question to you is, when you have no obstacles in your mind, that's supposed to be the best season, not spring, autumn, summer, winter. When you have the best season in you, is not looking at the flowers, looking at the moon, looking at the winter snow. The best season in your mind, where you have peace of mind, is when you have no obstacles in your mind. What are these obstacles? These obstacles, just to summarize it, are your mental afflictions. Mental afflictions. When you have something in your mind, you don't have peace of mind. When you have greediness in your mind, you don't have peace of mind. When you have hatred, when you have jealousy, when you have anxiety, when you have depression, any tinkling of thought, when you have any thought in your mind, as a matter of fact, like not just jealousy and hatred, when you have, oh, have I done my shopping for tonight? That's not peace of mind. Oh, where am I going for lunch? That's not peace of mind. It's when you have not a single trace of thought in your mind. When you're clear of all these, that's peace. When you're not polluted, when your mind is not polluted, our mind is 24 multiplied by 60, multiplied by 60, it's every second. Well, not just every second. The thought comes not just second by second by second. It comes fraction of second by second. I can't, how, how fast, how flashy it is, I don't know. But when you have not a single thought, no trace. So when you have not a single obstacle in your mind, that's the best season. However, we have to learn how to have no obstacles in our mind. If you don't identify these obstacles, how can you get rid of them? You can just say it, empty talk is nothing. Empty talk does not really help. Some people say talking about it is good enough. Talking about not having it, talking about peacefulness, talking about meditation, talking about coming on a Saturday to do meditation, that's enough. That's not enough. That's just the first step. You really have to know. First of all, you have to identify your problem. My problem, your problem, the mental problem. Identify all these and then find a solutions, find methods to resolve these. And then you find a solution to it. That's what we're doing now. We are studying the Heart Sutra. We are trying to identify all these obstacles, finding out where these obstacles are. Why do they come up? Why do I have all this thought come up? Why do I criticize people? Why do I find thoughts about people? Why do I have emotions? Don't you have to identify all these things? before you get to that peace, that tranquility, that nirvana, that state where you are free from all these mental afflictions. Some people don't even know about that state. 
It's not a location. It's not a heaven. If it is a location, it's the wrong place. Heaven is not a location. It's a state of mind. Not even a state. I don't know how to talk about it, because you really have to say something to express it. But heaven is not a location. It's not the right place to go. There is a heavenly location, but that's not the right place to go. Because if there's a location, there is phenomena, there's form. Where there is form, there's acquisition. Where there's acquisition, there's no peace of mind. Where there's acquisition, there's no peace of mind. I want to get this. I want to acquire this. I want to be. Uh, I want to be a monk. I want to get nirvana. I want to meditate. I want to do this. I want that. Still, is not the final, not the final answer. You're going to be rid of all these things. But it's easy to talk about it. Let's venture into it. Let's explore more into it. So let's get into the Heart Sutra now. Last time we were talking about the eight consciousnesses. Where are these mind obstacles? Where do these mental afflictions come from? Your worrying, your depression, everything about your mind. It comes from the consciousness. Remember, last time we said we have the six organs corresponding to the six objects: eyes corresponding to form, visual consciousness is created; ears correspond to sound; auditory consciousness is created; nose correspond or interact with smell; and the third consciousness, the odor consciousness, is created; tongue interact with taste; the taste consciousness is created; body interact with touch. Tactile consciousness is created. Mind interacts with all thoughts, and the mind consciousness, which is the mano, the manager. We talk about the manager, the mind manager is created. Mano, remember the mano, the poor guy, the mano is always your manager, managing your thoughts, managing everything about you. It is the culprit. Uh, but just not, don't blame him. He is what you train him to be, because he can lead you to nirvana. But if you don't train him properly, he lead you down to hell. Depends on you. We like mano, because he he give us happiness, he give us joy. Uh, sometimes he give us worries and fear and anxiety, but we don't forsake him. He's there, and there's this the manas. The ego, who interact all the time with mano manager, and there is this bookkeeper, a liar, who controls everything, who records everything, but he's not making a decision. He just receives everything into his tremendous space of general ledger. His space is immeasurable. Memory tubes. He record and record and record, and he give and he give and he give. He give out the energy. He's not saying anything. He just receive, and when the time comes when you when we die out, he just roll into the next body and do the same thing again. He's not making any judgment. He just take everything in. He's like your your bank account. You put in the money, he just receive it. You have outlay. He just paid it. He's not making the judgment. We will talk about that already. Don't think that this is. Oh, we talk about this. There was a Vinaya master. He listened to his master to talk about a Vinaya book, and he listened to it 21 times. 21 times. Every time, three, four months. 21 times until he got all in his mind. When he contemplate, when he meditates, got all in his mind, and he became a Vinaya master. Later, you wouldn't want his training. Training is just to repeat to Mano, your manager. Repeat to your manager. Habitually, everything to your manager. Don't do this. Do that. Don't do this. Do that. You have to get it in your mind all the time. Actually, you should memorize it. Memorize it and memorize the Heart Sutra so that when you're meditating, when you are contemplating, visualizing, it all comes into place. 
in your subconsciousness. And you can stick it to the wall, every day look at it. That is Kuan Yim's. That is Kuan Yim's method of enlightenment. Did you believe in Kuan Yim? You did even have a locutus Prabhupada You're always in touch with her if you have that memorized in your heart. It's not difficult to memorize. We chant it in a few minutes. Memorize it. Okay, then the eight consciousnesses, because in your next sentence, Avalokitesra Bodhisattva, using prajna, contemplate that the five scanters are empty. The five scanters are sunyata. The five scanters are void. What are the five scanters? How are the five scanters related to this consciousness? How are they related? People have been talking about I, mine, me. I is make up of the five scanters, the body and mind. What are these five scanters? Matter, perception, conceptualization, volition, and vichnana. The five scanters, the first one is matter. In the Sanskrit language is rupa. Remember we're living in this, we call it the universe, which has approximately three levels. This universe is filled with sentient beings, with beings living on this universe. And this universe has a lot of beings. And the Buddha generally generalized it into three categories. Beings in the Kama Dattu, Dattu means world, world of desire. Beings in world without desire, but they still have a form, Rupa Dattu, which is matter. And then beings that are much higher level, they don't attach to form anymore. But they have the essence that exists. They get rid of desires. They get rid of form, but they still have this consciousness left. In other words, they got rid of all this coarse, outer pollutants. But they get to a level that they only have the consciousness left, which is still polluted consciousness. So we are saying, some people say, oh, poor me, I don't have a form anymore. Because we have form, we're in trouble. They don't have a form, they're not in trouble. So the lowest level, not only do they haven't got rid of the form, they haven't got rid of the desires, that's you and me. What kind of desires we have? Desire for material acquisition, for wealth, for money, for for pleasures, for joy, sensual pleasures, you name them. We've got lots of these desires. And because of these desires, we're in the process of, through our mouth, our thought, our actions, we perform a lot of karmic energy, created and recorded in a liar, the bookkeeper. And when we die, we roll with this general ledger, with this karmic energy into the next life, who determine it? Who determine where they'll go in the next life with the, with the coming energy? Who determine? Yeah, God? Is it God? God determine where I go? <laughs> no. No. Don't, don't blame God if you've gone in the wrong place. You. You determine your own because that's what you did. Everything that you thought, everything that you did, everything that you talk about creates energy, coming energy. You criticize someone, or you wrongly accuse someone, you think, you think you can, okay, after they talk about these wrong accusations, nobody listen. Nobody listen. Nobody, no, so, I'm okay. Nobody listen. No. That is a register into the general ledger. There's a liar, the bookkeeper. He recorded everything. You can't get away with it. When the time comes in the next life, that it seats when you meet the same person that you, critic you criticize, or you find fault, or you hurt, when you meet him, it flashes back to you, and it flashes back into the general ledger with all these, and then the seats are wriggling. It sprouts, and you interact with him or her again. So you, tie, you, you know this relationship, right? You know this relationship. So, Rupa is 
a matter, we live in a matter world, a lower level world with matter, not just with matter, with desires. Our ears, our eyes, our nose, our, our tongue, our body, they can only interact with matter. When we say matter, it's not just matter that creates obstruction. So this is obstruction, matter, molecules and protons, electrons. Matter also refers to the sound, anything that has frequency. So matter also includes the auditory, the frequencies. Um, for example, music is also a matter. When matter is a, 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 a generalized word, it includes everything that your senses interact to. But the, the, uh, the, the obvious ones are the ones that you see, you listen, you touch. So all these six consciousnesses, mind including, interact with matter. So in other words, when we talk about matter, we talk about all these organs, consciousness, and objects. Six plus six plus six is 18. We're living in the 18 realms with these 18 interactions. And matter is just a word that generalizes all these. So when you visualize, when you contemplate on emptiness of the matter, you don't know how to contemplate. How do I visualize matter is empty? Matter is empty? I mean, I, I, got, I got a bell in here. I got board in here, but how empty are they? If you just visualize on the emptiness of matter, you are not getting nowhere because you don't know the breakdown of this. This matter includes the body, the tongue, the nose, the ears, the eyes, the form, the sound, the smell, taste, the touch. It also contains all the consciousness as a result created. So you must think, is my body empty? How empty is my body? My body is made up of a cessation of all different causes put together. I got heart, lung, spleen, blood, 32 parts of the body. How does this body make up of? But this body is like a machine, a mechanics that if it, if it goes well, it works good for me. And if it doesn't go well, I will be sick. If it's really gone to almost destructions, I, I, I died. So is this me? Is this body really me? Is my heart me? Is my lung, my, my spleen, my liver? Is this me? It's a molecule, it's a flesh. Then how come I got to exist? My mom gave me this body. I came in the mom's embryo. And then I got born, I got growing, every time I got growing. So this embryo, who gave my mom this embryo that contains me? Oh, because a, a man and a woman came together in Tarak and the sperm and the oval fused together. And then that becomes, an, uh, they come, becomes me. So how come they got fused together? Oh, because they have sensual pleasure. They think they like it and they feel it fuses together and the chances it may not fuse together but it fuses together now. And why do they come together? Oh, my mom met my, my dad and they got married. And you trace, you trace, you trace. It's just causations put together. And why do my mom and my dad bear me, give rise to me and not, not John's mom and dad? Oh, my mom and dad, they knew me in previous lives. I have an ending business with them. I've got to come back again to fulfill whatever I have to fulfill, to pay what I have a debt I haven't paid, and to get back money that they owe me. I mean, all these things, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not supernatural. I can see all these things. There must be a reason. That's matter. That's how you visualize the emptiness of matter. So if I don't tell you the relationship between this, how can I contemplate on the emptiness of the five scanters? I cannot, because I don't know the details. Even this is not detailed enough. The Buddha break it more down, every section. Break it down into further detail. It's just you, you don't want to know about it, and nobody told you. Nobody told you about the Buddha's teaching. 
And now you know. Somehow, because of your previous causes, somehow because you, I don't know what causes, I'm not, I don't have supernatural power. You just come to here and you take the Buddhist teaching through my mouth speaking about it. I'm just a medium of exchange. It could be somebody who got you here. I don't know. You know. This is a matter, including the body, molecules, elements. And then you say, am I just pick up of the matter? Of just Rupa? And let me tell you, the analysis of this is not enough. What pick up of my eyes? What are the elements of my eyes? What pick up of this body? The body is made up of the four elements, we generalize it. Molecules, fluidity, temperature, and oxidity, moving. So it's form, fluid, heat, and moving. All these are the elements. I can go on and on and on with the Buddhist teaching, but that's enough. We got this whole body working because of this. And then we say, okay, then we still have the spiritual side of it, not just the matter. I'm not just making of the matter. I'm also make of perception, because when I see, my eyes see, my ears sound, listen to sound, all these things would arouse feelings and perception. My eyes perceive them. This perception is not due to materiality, it's due to my consciousness perception. It's not, nothing to do with matter. So I have perception, when I have perception, I have feeling, I have a, a, a pleasurable feeling, non-pleasurable feeling, I have a neutral feeling. And when I have this feeling, I will continue to conceptualize it. I'm going back to the past and the memory. I'm going to analyze what I see. I'm going to pass judgment on it. I'm going to, to postulate about it. I have a lot of conceptualization about it. And when I have conceptualization about it, I'm making a decision because of this seats in my consciousness. I'm interacting with them then I would determine to have volitional speech and volitional action. I won't just conceptualize it. After you conceptualize it, you do nothing. There's just conceptualization. You are in that stage of the mano and the manas. But you will perform it with the alaya consciousness. You will have volitional action, vol volitional speech. You will perform accordingly. And all this performance will get stored back into the into the general ledger. The general ledger provides you with all, the, with all this latent energy and you carry out this. What did you carry out? What volitional actions? Good, bad, or neutral? Killing, lying, sexual misconduct, cursing, double tongueing you name them, those are the bad stuff. Sometimes you're compassionate, you're kind, those are the good stuff. All this bad and good stuff all add together will get your karmic energy, get recorded, but get recorded, you perform it. Some of the performances we will get result right away. Um, you, you, you broke the law, you'll be punished. You, you, you rape, you, you will be punished by the government. You steal, you'll be punished by law. And all these are karmic actions that were stored in there. And oh, a lot of complications. And then it kept all stored into the witch nine again, into the general ledger. And if a criminal, for example, is sentenced to capital punishment, he die. When he die, you think that's it? He pay for everything? He's clean? He pay for? Everything is recorded again in, in, her, in his general ledger. And he carry on in the next life. Uh, a capital punishment is the punishment to the body and for this life. He could go back to, go down to hell or he will reincarnate into I don't know what, and carry on the next karmic energy. That's how, that's why the Buddha said, be awakened now. Awaken to all these, all these consequences and all these happenings and get away from these. These are nothing but suffering. These are nothing but suffering that you don't know about. Get away from these. That's what Avi Sutra is all about. But how many people <laughs> would try to know this and would try to have the consistency and the perseverance to get out from this? 
not many people. Now you've done the first step. That first step will take you further and further and further. A very important first step. Don't stop. Don't stop and, and do something else. Carry on. Don't get into the next life again. Don't get into another cycle of suffering again. Get away from this. So I'll explain one slide again, which is good. I'll explain the five skantas. Remember, if you have this, just this one slide, you contemplate on it and think about, thinking about it, that will lead you to nirvana. You don't have to get into volumes of books, volumes of videos on YouTube. Some people just look at the cookbook and the recipes. They never get to work. They got a lot of cookbooks at home, pile and pile of stacks, and make a, lots and lots of photocopies on YouTube about colorful, oh, very colorful. They classified it. Oh, this is bakery, this is uh, a la carte, this is so oh, desserts. They never get to work on it. They never get to get the hands dirty. They never go out to buy the flour, the, the, the cornstarch, the, the spice and material. They never go out to, to, to just make photocopies. They run the machine every day, making photocopies and shelf them on the shelf. Then you come back again in your next life and do the own suffering. They do the same shelving. I believe in that. I always talk to a cook, a Ming, and I said, let's have more variety. Yeah, give me the book. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to give you any book any further. Look at the book on your shelf right now in the kitchen. It's the same with us. 